my life has been a, a succession of brilliant decisions by women, you know, who changed the course of my life time and time again. This is Really Famous. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson, and I interview famous people. But I don't just interview them like your typical interview. I'm not really interested in those same old questions. Instead, I like to know who they really are and what they really think. My guest today is Yul Vazquez. Okay, did you see Seinfeld? You may remember a character named Bob the Intimidating Gay Guy. Yes, that's officially the character's name, and he was played by Yul Vazquez. He was in the Soup Nazi episode and the Puerto Rican Day episode, and he is so funny. In fact, I recommend that right now you just hit pause and you go and watch a YouTube clip of him on Seinfeld. It is so funny. It's really like priceless, so enjoyable. So have fun with that. Now, Yule is also currently on Russian Doll. It's that new show on Netflix. There's a lot of buzz surrounding it because it's very cool and very different. And you have to kind of figure things out as you go. Um, it stars Natasha Leone and Yule plays her ex. And yes, we do talk about that. Um, he is also right now in I Am The Night, which is a limited series about the unsolved murder of the Black Dahlia. It's on TNT and it stars Chris Pine. Yule plays a dark and menacing cop. So just gonna rattle off a few of the very many television shows and movies that Yule has been in. Bad Boys 2, Runaway Bride, Narcos Mexico, Bloodline, Madam Secretary, Midnight Texas, The A-Team, it really just goes on and on. Now, a quick note before we begin, if you are in New York and you're craving really good theater, check out Perp. It's a play from the Barrow Group, which is an off-Broadway theater company and school. And in the play, there is a vicious killer on the loose. And one man sets out on a harrowing quest to find the perpetrator, even as he's the unwitting target of detectives who need to win at any cost. It's running now through April 11th. You can just click on the link in the show notes for tickets. Now back to Yul Vazquez and me having a deep, real, and very personal conversation at Sofitel, New York. And fun fact, I had just finished up my conversation with Griffin Dunn. If you want to listen to that, it just ran two weeks ago, so it should be fresh on your podcast app. And here we are, Yule and me, in fact, talking about Griffin Dunn leaving Sofitel. Somebody like that could have a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, baggage or something, you know, but which he doesn't, you know, he's so... He's so completely like um, I know. down to earth and normal and just, I mean, yeah. Griffin Dunn, if you're listening. So you can you listen were just to on the his. podcast. I just walked in the door and I, and, I, and I adore you, my friend. I think you're a titan of an artist. For sure. So Griffin and I just recorded an episode of the podcast and then you were coming up and as he was leaving, he asked me who was coming in next. I said, oh, Yul Vasquez is coming in. He said, tell him, uh, first of all, if I don't meet him in the elevator, I'll see him later at, I forget the name of the, the place. The Knickerbocker? I don't think it was the Knickerbocker. Could the Marlton? Have been, could have started with a T. I feel like it was something else. And he said that you live in the same neighborhood. And that we we hang place. out. There's a couple of places, uh, spots, a couple of watering holes yeah. that we that we uh, that we go to, uh, you know, and a bunch of other guys. But uh, uh, I'm not here. I'm actually I, I go back to Atlanta tomorrow, so I'm not gonna. I'm in Atlanta till July. So yeah. So wait, you live? Where do you live? I live then? here. Oh. But I'm shooting. I'm shooting in Atlanta. I'm shooting a, a new show in Atlanta for HBO. It's called The Outsider. Oh, okay. It's based on the Stephen King book. Oh, that sounds exciting. Yeah, yeah, Jason Bateman and, and Ben Mendelsohn and Bill Camp and Ooh, good I mean, people. amazing people. Yeah, really incredible. Got it. So did you feel like you caught some breaks along the way? I feel like I have, I have, yeah, I think I've, uh, there's things that have sort of been monumental moments, but I think my thing has been a, sort of a slow, steady build of just, you know, hard work and, and, and good fortune, you know, and, and people giving me like, you know, it's definitely been a tough road, you know. I've had it. It's 
It's up and down. Ups and down. So, yeah. And Griffin and I were talking about this too. So tell me about that road, the ups and the downs. You, you, because I was telling him too. I feel like to outsiders, like it looks to me as an outsider who has never met you, like oh, you look at you, the steady stream of work, like consistently in good things. Like it looks like it's so easy, but you're saying no, it's been yeah. hard. I mean, sometimes what, the, like those what? those things that I've been in, you know, like I couldn't even. Like get in, get get in the door. I mean, I finally got in the door, and then I got the job. I mean, it, which is super sweet. But but just getting in the door, you know what I mean? Or or you know, um, having somebody uh, recognize you or or value you. You mean or it's it doesn't matter. I mean, I you know, it's my I know it. I know it can seem from the outside like it's all so simple. But all those things are all those things are are earned at at, at at great uh, expense, you know, mental, physical, emotional, you know. I've had great m moments of tremendous joy and moments of, of tremendous sadness, you know. I mean, it's, it, like, so it's part of the deal. Well, you know? right, it's part of the I deal. Mean, the, you know, things... Things that make you that may might make somebody an interesting artist to, to watch or whose work to, to look at it's just say all the same things that probably make their life a living fucking hell. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a struggle. It's it's, it's if you remove one, you you alter the rat the other one. You know, you can't. It's price to pay for everything, everything. Right. So walk me through an example of like one of the toughest moments for you. Uh, I remember years ago, years ago, I, w I was in LA and I had like, like thirteen dollars, like in like my bank account, it was like, and um, they wanted me to test for. There was a the, and I and I and I probably would have gotten this job. It's crazy. It was which would it would have been a lot of money. A spinoff of of Walker Texas Ranger. And my my agent at the time, this woman Holly Lebed, very wise, really the woman who, uh, you know, I always tell people my 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 life is 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 a is a is a is a, is a, a series of, of excellent decisions by by smart women. You know, and it really is true. I mean, it really is true. Starting with my mother, but. So Holly Lebed, you know, was a woman who basically was with my first agent, and the, the woman who like took a shot and said, you know, I don't, know if, I don't know if you can act, but you seem interesting. I have very long hair, and like, so I was, it was, a, I think it was a Sunday, and I was supposed to go in the next day to test for this spinoff of Walker Texas Ranger. So you, you can imagine what this was like. She calls me and she goes, um, I don't think you should, I don't think you should go in. And I go. Really? She kind of go. Do you really want to do this? Is this what you want to be known at? Like for for? And I go. I go. No. I still have no money. She's like, you gotta just kind of believe, like, that it'll work out. Like, and I didn't go. I didn't go. It was amazing. And I prob. I'm telling you, I had like thirteen dollars. I probably would have gotten this job. So that oh, I'm guessing that opened the door for something else that was right next. To you. No, it didn't. Yeah, it did. It did. It did. It, but did. it, it opened. It, it. It just. It was it was the it was the one million percent the right move to do was not go in right because had I done it you would have gotten stuck into that I would have been like the guy on the whatever not no disrespect to Walker Texas Ranger but I'm saying it's not the career that I had envisioned you know which I think is an important thing for a young actor or for any any artist really to to have a target and say this is. This is the target. This is the model. This is the standard. This is the career. You know, and you can visualize that because along the way, the the tides are going to push you in different directions. But if you can still see that lighthouse, you you'll get close. You'll get close. You know what I mean? This was one of those moments where the tide mm -hmm. was pushing me, and I was like, man, you know, I really want to be Montgomery Clift, but I got thirteen dollars in my bank account. This is a lot of money. I will probably get this job if I go in and test for this tomorrow, do this network test. What are, and she's, this woman is saying to me, don't do it. That's so interesting. Oh, she was, it was unbelievable. 
So she knew you, she was with you. She knew what your eyes were on. She knew. She knew what exactly. She knew what my what my eyes were were on. You know, and um, you know, it's it, it's interesting. I had a manager along the same time too, who like started to manage me, and then she wanted me to do commercials. And I said, I really don't want to do commercials. And she said, Well, then I can't represent you, because yeah, they wanted to make the commercial money. I was like, Okay, and then. Right. Well, that's somebody who's in it more for themselves, right. obviously, we than went, for you. Yeah, we went, we went our separate ways, right? Yeah. I mean, she was she's a great lady. It was just like not, you know what I mean? Yeah. But Holly Levitt, you know, she's saying, she called on us on a Sunday. She's like, I know this. I know you. And I go, yeah, you're right. Because I was thinking about it. I was going, what the fuck am I going to go do now? You know, you know, am I really going to go do this? Like, this is amazing. So what was going on when you had $13? Like, where were you? Where were you living? I was living in LA. I was living on um, on Waring Avenue. I was I was I was only in LA for a very short amount of time, like maybe like like a year and a half or something. Or in LA, maybe two years. I don't know. I I, I didn't I didn't really uh, I wasn't loving being there. You mean? Um, uh, but I was uh, I had been in a relationship that had dissolved, and I was like sort of still in LA for a little bit, and and then I came back to you know. Right, because you come back to New York, but um, so I was living out. You know, I get like residual checks for some stuff, and just try and get to the next. So, do you, gig. are there certain moments when you're like, maybe I wasn't cut out to like succeed as an actor in between the jobs, like then, or did yeah, you, you know? Always, you, always, yeah, always. I mean, you, but you, but you, you're always questioning something. I mean, you, I think you're always questioning. I think, I think the minute you, I think the minute you stop, any artist begins to question. I think it's game over. You know what I mean, because I think the insecurities, man, is so, you know, because everything, everything is throwing a stone in your way. You know I mean, like you tripped constantly. So you, every time you trip, you're like, do I really want to trip again? You know, and you just keep going. You know, you just you go to job and the next job, and the next job, and you just keep, you know, but. You're always questioning. You know, I, I, I question I question everything every day. Mm -hmm. Every day for me is a fucking chore. I mean, just literally, just getting through the fucking day sometimes. It's just, I mean, you know, um, you're going to send me a bill for a th like a therapy bill after this, aren't you? I, mean, <laughs> I can just see it now. Uh, but no, but you know, every day. I feel day, like I might have to reveal what I revealed to Griffin too. That I was a therapist before I did this. Were you really? Yeah. Oh my so god! I'm You're probably an I'm amazing legit. therapist. I don't know. I don't know. But um, that's what Why I. Why did you quit therapy? So I didn't so much therapist. quit yeah. as much as I started writing because I'm a journalist too. So I started writing like on the side when I had a practice, and it was mostly like self help kind of things. Right. And then I started writing so much. I liked the writing a lot. And so the writing just kind of took over. And I, I, when I was writing, most of it was what started to make it take over was that I was doing profiles on people. So like these in-depth kind of pieces on people, mostly right. actors. Right, 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 um, right. So it was linked to the therapy, even though I kind of didn't realize it maybe then. Yeah. And so the, the therapy just kind of faded out. It wasn't that I quit it. I really yeah. never, I have nothing against it. Yeah, yeah. And you there just... are things about it I miss, honestly. Well, you're very good at, at getting people like, because, you know, to share stuff with you. I mean, because, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm being honest when I say every day is like, you know, every, you know, um, um, so, quest so, your work being questioned all the time is, is just, it's so easy, you know, you have to like, you have to know, a very tough thing to know, but you have to find a way and you have to arrive at the moment where you understand your worth. Um, and then you, and you have to understand, if so if you hang around long enough, it's tough early on, because mm -hmm. it's early, but if you hang around long enough and enough people have hired you, then you can say, okay, the verdict of whether I'm good at this is fucking in. And so you get to the after, because there's so much to right. show you that. There's so much Correct. proof. You, but, but, and, and somebody could be like, you know what, maybe this is not for you, or like, you know, but there's no question that I'm good at this, because here's why, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you get to those places, you know, and then you, and you, and you build being begin to build a being, you know, like, like, 
like Gurdjieff used to say, build, build being, you know, uh -huh. like, and you, and then suddenly you begin to sort of emerge and you go like, okay, maybe, you know, uh, maybe I don't go as low this time. Maybe I'm still, you know, and then, you know, and then sometimes you get, you get a little bashed and you go, and you, and you go low, you mean, but, yeah. but you slowly begin to not go, you, you begin to get better uh, at, at, at confidence, at feeling confident and saying, no, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're catching yourself. Yeah. Or you're not because, because early on too, you'll do, you, people will abuse you, you know, people at work will abuse you, you know, directors, producers, whatever. People just, they just take advantage of you, you know, they're like, and then you start going, well, yeah, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm, you know, because mm -hmm. at first you're like, I'll do anything, man. Yeah, yeah, you want to put that, whatever, you want to throw blood on my eye? Yeah, go ahead. Like, and then you go like, yeah, you know, no, no. Right, because you're trying to make it. So why wouldn't you do everything? You're trying everything? to play ball. Right. You want to be, you want to be amenable. You want to please people. You know, it's you, you, be, you become a classic enabler. Yeah. In a way. You know what I mean, it's like you're like suddenly you're like you know, and for somebody like myself who has, who grew up without his father, who has abandonment issues with men, so directors became those father figures. So seeking the approval. I realized one day I was like, I remember one day I was shooting this thing and I said to this director, I said, how was that, was that okay? And he went, he went, yeah, he goes, you know what, I'll tell you when it's not okay. So I was like, all right, copy that. So I'm like, I don't, I don't need this guy, so, you know, right. stop, stop asking. Stop needing the, you know. Um, Yes. But, uh, you know, there's a, there was a realization that I was like, you know, because directors, whether they are a man or a woman on set, be, is the, uh, the father figure, is the authority figure. Right. And it's usually a man. So it makes it man. easier to project whatever feelings you have onto that man. Correct. And get into that relationship with him because it's already like that. Right. It's set up like that. Set up like that already. Yes. It's, it's, it's in its very architecture. Correct. So, yes. but then you started, so this one guy kind yeah, of helped you he, turn the... Yeah, but and later I started realizing, oh, I, I'm I'm, I have an identification, you know, because I, you know, through therapy, I'm like, I realized, okay, I have abandonment issues with, you know, yeah. with, with men. And, so and what, ha can we back up? What happened sure. with your, you were born in Cuba and there born for a couple Cuba. years, right? Yeah, born uh, in Cuba and I came, yeah, I came when I was two. So your mom, did your mom move here alone? Or moved, what? came to the States with uh, her two children. You know, and, my, but not my, your dad? My, my, no, the, my parents were divorced. So when did they get divorced? Uh, right, I guess, right before we left Cuba. Like maybe when I was one or something. I think, you know, he already, I don't know. He had a, he had a second family right away, so there might have been some overlap. Right, you know, okay. You know, her dad was quite the uh, killer. So did you figure that out later, or was that kind of the story that you grew up with? I figured what what like that what, there may have been overlap and what. Oh, was I think I figured it out later. But I mean, I always say, you know, I have, I have so many. My mother went to her grave with so many secrets that I don't even know. Like, and like I tried to ask my mother stuff. Like, I remember one I, one day I was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring a camera. I'm gonna I'm gonna interview her. You know, and my mother was my mother was like super tough. So you did do that. It lasted two minutes. She's oh. like, "I'm not doing. I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to talk about. It. I don't want to talk about. I don't want to talk about that stuff. Why? It's very hard. It was very hard for her. She's like, I don't want to talk about my childhood. My childhood was shit. You know. She's like, I'll talk about that. I don't. But I had so many questions. You know. She's like, What are you writing a book? I'm like, you know. I was like, and my mother was like amazing, super dark s sense of humor, like like me and like and, um. You know one law in my house was my mother. There was no negotiation in, in my house. Um, okay, just a little side note. I just did that with my dad. I took the mics and yeah. the voice recorder and I yeah. did a whole interview with him. And I felt, he was into it. Was he game? Game, wow, totally. Amazing. Loved it, wow, loved that's amazing. it. Two hours. Wow. And I, would, we had to, I had to keep him, you know, like keep it going. Otherwise yeah. I knew we'd sit there for 10 hours and do yeah. it. But he didn't have a rough childhood. So that's a different deal. Yeah. But okay, backing up. So to your mom. Well, you know, my, my, my uncle Ray, who was very close to me and to my mother, uh, who was in the Bay of Pigs invasion and was a political prisoner in Cuba, I could, I could only get him to talk about that for maybe five minutes and then he'd be like, he'd be like, 
Right. You didn't even say much. You'd be like, no, let's talk about something else. It's like a you different. It was amazing. Right. Yeah. But it's a so, different, um, like, a we're sort of a different generation, too, in that we like to talk about the pain a little bit more, maybe. And well, there's a curious nature. Right. It's, a, it's also cultural. Right. And, but the thing is, like, what might be curious for us was not cur- was for them was was what they lived. So I was like, "Fuck you! I don't want this. I know you're curious about this, but I don't want to relive this conversation. I don't want to talk to you about this because I'm going to have to think about this shit that was horrible. I mean, you know, and my mother like, but there was like just on the way here, my nephew texted me, "Where? What exact uh, hospital were you born in?" Uh, Havana, and he needs it for like he's doing some paperwork, and I, was, I literally I wrote back. I have no idea. No idea. And I texted my sister. And my sister's like, I don't know. One more unanswered question that I have that I'll never have the right, answer. Right, because your mom died. My mom died and my dad died. So now, so it's just you and your sister, basically? Well, what about your uncle? And he your uncle? My, my uncle passed away as well. Yeah, I have very little family left. I have, you know, I have, I have my wife uh, and, and me, but, you know, I have, uh, you know, and I have, like, uh, some nieces and nephews that I'm really... Really close to. Um, right, like, who's the nephew then? The it's house. My sister's it's your kid. sister's. Okay, and yeah. she's here too. My sister's in Miami. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I bet you could. I bet there are records somehow you could get that, I'd, but not. I mean, there's so many things that aren't going to be on records. That I'd have is to so go much, to Cuba and get yeah. somebody to go in the records. Yeah. And then, you know, you know, Cuba's. It's not. It's, like a you genealogist. Know, it's a police state. It's not so simple to investigate things. That's right. To get every to get answers. I mean, it's like, have you been to Cuba? I did actually go last this past summer, but yeah. very briefly. We like were on a cruise, and it just stopped. And it was supposed to stop for two days, and then they announced, "Oh, sorry, we're only here for one." And we were all like, "What?" It was such a big disappointment. Somebody changed their mind. Somebody changed Probably their the mind. Cuban government were like, "I know, I know, we said two, right? But really, we meant one, right? Right." Yeah, so I we mean, had a big full day, and like yeah. we like did as much in Havana to get the feel for like yeah. what's really what. Yeah. But we all, like, my whole family felt like we need so much more time. It would be yeah. nice. It's, I mean, I've been a, you know, I went to go, obviously, meet my, my half-brother. But uh, um, I, would, I wouldn't go to Cuba while my mother was alive. That was because my mother was vehemently opposed to So she wanted to leave it all behind. A million percent. Yeah. My mother was like, my mother said, I have nothing to go to Cuba for. Nothing. Zero. Understandably. Everything is here. So, what, did she have parents? Like, did you know ever know your grandparents or never? I knew, like, my, young, I knew my I knew my grandmother. I knew my and her her mom was and I w- was very close to me when I, we were kids. So she moved here too. Then came with us. Oh, my came with, yeah. So I was the only male uh, and the youngest in a house full of women. Uh, so I think that has such a big impact I on think a it, man, I think, yeah. on a boy growing up yeah. to be a man. I think it has a huge impact. I think it has a huge, a huge impact on me as a, as a, um, as a, as an actor, guitar player, what artist, you know. Uh, um, it has a very big effect. I mean, I think it. I definitely have. It's which is interesting because I play all these really sort of heavies. Yeah, you do. But I really have a very strong feminine side. You know, I mean, and like I identify with more more sensitive things than, you know, naturally. You know, um, I'm always firing weapons and stuff in movies. That I, is so interesting. I, I, I hate guns. You know, I, th- I that's not my jam. You know. So how did this happen then? That you sort of got fell into that, not fell in, but that you do play a lot of you. You uh, yeah. give that off easily. Well, you know, it's funny because my friend Sam goes, "People that don't know you when they first meet you, they're they're going to be intimidated by you." And I'm like, "Why?" Well, like, something about you, man. Because but once I get to know you, and they realize, oh "My God, this guy's." This guy's not that at all. Yeah, so, I'm going to tell you, I, I had a different impression of you. I think I think I might have thought coming in that you would be like that. Like, but you, but the like like you, like everybody would think you are, which yeah. you're not. But I felt like the minute I that you walked through the door, yeah, I liked you right away, and oh, I wow. didn't feel intimidated by you. I felt good about you. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, that, that's good. I'm I'm happy. I'm yeah, happy to yeah, hear yeah. that. I'm happy to hear that. But I could see why they would yeah. think that. And I yeah. think I would have thought that go, coming in. But I feel like the second that I met you, that wasn't that I had a different feel. Well, that um, that makes me happy. I mean, I, I, my favorite people, some of my favorite humans are, are women. So I think I'm, I mean, you were very nice right away. So, you you know, and very gracious and I, I, I liked you as well. Had, 
you know, if you were a man, maybe you'd be like, I may I might be a little more guarded, but, um, uh, you know, I don't know. I I love women. I love the company of women. Uh, yeah. So my favorite, like I said, my life has been a, a succession of brilliant decisions by women, you know, who changed the course of my life time and time again. So obviously the first one was your mom. Leaving Cuba. Leaving Cuba, leaving your dad. Correct. Can Saying you, I'm not going to, my children will not live in communism. I mean, That's major. Didn't speak English, came to the States. I mean, just to be With a two little kids. Yeah. Right. I mean, I couldn't do that. Even with no kids. Moved to a country, I didn't speak the language even by myself. I was like, it's terrifying. It's yeah. fucking terrifying, man. So she was pretty badass. Oh, she was a, she was a G. And she really wanted to take her kids and bring them to safety make, and make a better well, she's like it's, it's gonna be a better life I'm, I'm not doing this this is fucked up so yeah. that was the first big decision that's the first one first yeah. woman making a big yeah. decision that impacted your life for the better yeah and then what then so then there was a woman that was my girlfriend a woman by the name of G, of Gigi Freddie uh who went so I was playing in a band because I started I really I had acted as a little kid because my mother was an actress but uh, and I was sort of the default kid, so they would throw me in these plays. And there was, my mother was in a theater company in Miami comprised of Cuban-American actors, you know, that had sort of been exiled over and formed a, a theater company so they could work, you know. And she got paid so she could make a living yeah. and take care of you guys? Well, she worked. She, she was a waitress. She worked at a grocery store, but, you know, like, and she would do plays. I mean, it was all, you know, but I remember being on a, on a movie set when I was a little kid with her, sleeping on a mattress in a corner because my mother was working. I mean, so... It, 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 you know, I actually remember that. Um, but so they would do plays and they would throw me in these plays. Um, but I didn't want to, I wanted to be a rock star. I was, you know, I wanted to play guitar. So I started playing guitar. I mean, I started my artistic life as a, as a drummer. I was five, which, so th this should tell you a lot about my mom. My mother bought me a drum kit. So we lived, in, we lived in an apartment in Miami Beach was my mother, my grandmother, my sister, and me. And my mother bought me a fucking drum set. That says a lot. And let her <laughs> son, who was learning how to play the drums, play the fucking drums. I mean, dude. Like real drums, it wasn't even like a little no, drum no, pad real or anything. Oh no, no, this is, full, this is real drums. With it was cymbals on. and everything. S everything. <laughs> Kick drum, rack tom, tom, cymbal, the whole thing, it was amazing. So. You know, then I want. I did that for a bit, and then I wanted to play guitar because I heard I heard Led Zeppelin, I heard Jimmy Page. I was like, I want to do that, blah blah. You know, and I was like, and then, um, so I played in bands. And I played in bands, and I played in bands in Miami, and I did that for a long time. And I started dating this woman called G Gigi Freddie, and uh, who was really is really smart, and said to me one day, so you've you've taken Miami as far as you can take this as, as a guitar player in a rock band. You've maxed it out. What do you, now what? So she had a friend who was working at Epic Records in, in New York and um, they were looking at a band. They were looking to sign this band that, and they were looking for a new guitar player. And she came to me and said, we're moving to New York. Um, and you're gonna audition for this fucking band. I'm like, I never left Miami. I was such a mama's boy. You know, it was so close to my mom. I was like, okay. And like suddenly, like stuff like started vanishing in the in the apartment. Like this, like this move was real. I came to New York, and I the the day after I got here, I met with this band's manager. They gave me a tape, and then I went and basically auditioned and got the job. That's pretty good. Unbelievable. Yeah. Now, now I'm in this band in yep. New York, th who, which winds up not going with Epic Records, winds up going with EMI Records, and I wound up doing two records with this band. It was the first time, it was my first record deal. So. Who even get, who does that even happen to? That was, that's a lot, quick. It's nutty, you know, it's nutty. Um, so, you, um, I do, so her and I broke up, we, whatever, life, you know. 
and did the two records with this band, and then that band got dropped by EMI, and then I was kicking around, and then she, same woman, finds this other band that she likes very much, but she likes two other people in it. Like, she would see things and put it together. It's brilliant, sort of brain. And she calls me, and she goes like, I, this is band, you gotta see them, but I wanna, I want to put them with you and this other drummer and this and then so she 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 made that group and she got that band signed to Epic Records and I did one record with that band. That's pretty serious. Crazy. So while I'm in that band and while we do this record for Epic, we get we do this record. It doesn't really do very well. Uh, we li Epic. Epic drops us, we're, we're shopping another deal. The lead singer in the band's girlfriend worked at a talent agency. And her boss was a woman called Holly Lebed. Oh, Let's okay. Earlier. There's the connection. And they were casting the Oliver Stone Doors movie. And I had really long hair. And I used to talk to her about acting. And she said, you know, why don't you come in and talk to Holly? Like, just meet with Holly one day, you know? Like, she might. Wait, who said that? The girlfriend? Yeah, the girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So I go, and uh, she's like, you know, she's looking at me like, I like you. Like, you're, you are seem like a nice guy. You know, you're, you're pretty interesting. I don't know if you can act, but, like, literally says to me, I would represent you, though. I'd be your agent. But if you're serious, I need you to go study and, you know, do this and that. So she connected me with, like, five different teachers. The last teacher I met with, there's a guy called Bill Esper who just passed away, who like changed like my life uh, as an actor. So that's now three women right. made t intelligent decisions. Yes. So Holly Lebed was, you know, changed my life. Well, not only did they make de good decisions, which they did, but they also saw something in you that could come to fruition, you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. So they all believed in you, yeah. too. Maybe when I didn't even see it myself. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right, they did. And uh, so I start to study acting and the guys in the band say to me, we don't like that you're doing this studying acting thing, like you're either in the band or you, so they kind of gave me like an ultimatum. And I went to Bill and I said, I said, you know, the band, I'd never not been in a band in a million, like a million years since I was like 14 years old. It was crazy. So I was like, okay. So I was like, I go, and I'm like, uh, Bill says, look, that's a decision you have to make for yourself. I can't make that for you. But if you ask me if I think that, that you can act, my answer is yes. So, you know, and I went, I literally, I quit the band. And I remember that cab ride after I quit the band. And then six months later, I had my first job. Uh, and I went to LA and they cut all my hair off and I, I haven't been in a band since. Oh, really? Not yet, even on the side? Not even a side? No, I play guitar all okay. the time. And I, have, I hang out with a lot of music guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, tons of like, um, but I would, I might do a band again, but I haven't uh -huh. in a long time, you know. Right, so, so women have been key in your life mm -hmm. and you like them, you respect them and they give you what you need to, it sounds like. They've, I feel like in, in many ways they've sort of carried me through, you know. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I don't think they carried you too. You yeah. had to go with them. No, I went, to, I went willing, but yeah, I, yeah, I recognized yeah. that they were, that, that I, I trusted them. I, I, I followed willingly, you know. Right, but, right. But, they, but I, you know, it was, I mean, whether consciously or, 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 or not, I yeah. mean, they were, they, they led me. I mean, if, you know, if Gigi doesn't go, this is as far as you could go in Miami, I don't land in New York. Yeah, you stay in Miami, you just do, you just keep going I'm where done. you are. Like, like some guys I know, yeah. Right, so, so you're not, na well, no, that's not right. So are you ambitious, do you think? I think I, I think I'm ambitious because I'm 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 driven. I'm a, I'm a workaholic. I work I work. You know, I've had a job since I was 12 years old. But so uh, I work very hard. But I think I, I think I'm ambitious. But there's a lot of ambitious people that 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 you sometimes you need somebody to to shine the light. Mm -hmm. I mean, like turn the flashlight on, man, and go like, dude, walk there. 
like, because you're like this, you know, if you don't, sometimes the signposts yes. are coming to you, but you don't see them. You have to see the signpost. You know what I mean? You know, I could have said to the band, you know what, I'm going to stay in the band and I'm not going to study acting. That would have been a fucking disaster for me. That's the truth. I mean, we don't know ultimately. Right. Look, I could have not left Cuba. There's so many, there's, at so many times the whole thing could have collapsed like mm -hmm. a house of cards. I mean, it's like, you know, you change one thing and we don't arrive at this moment in this room, you and I. Right. I mean, it's, it's that, those things to me are, are what life is about. It's those, those threads that connect the next thing. You know, you, you delay tying your shoe and you get, you go downstairs and the car hits you and kills you. But if you hadn't delayed, you'd still be, you'd, you would have gotten across the street. Yes, yes, absolutely. Those are the, everything, every little thing. And you change one and you change the entire thing. You can't change one and not change the whole thing. Right. So, I don't know. Like sometimes I will be, and I will have a bad day. This is making me think of this. I'll have a bad day and I will actually think to myself, you know what, at least I didn't do that. Like for t late, be late in tying my shoes and then get hit by a car. It could have been an accident if I was, if well, I sure. wasn't, like maybe I'll be upset that I'm five minutes too late or something. I'm yeah. kind of making this up. But, but at least if I was on time, who knows, I could have gotten in a huge car accident. So five minutes That's delayed right. is all right. You know, it's all, exactly kind of right. bring yourself into that perspective. Well, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I know what you're saying. Because you're like, well, it could have been worse. You know what I mean? Um, and again, even going into into any artistic endeavor, there's never any guarantee, you know. And it's it's a crapshoot. Yeah. And and you can see, you know, people go, well, you know, you made those choices, and you know, and I'm gonna go, eh, really? Because you know, so you think there's no like you don't think the universe has a has a hand in in this stew? Like you you think this is all the oh I made this is oh and I'm like no dude no 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 I think call it anything you want to call it they're forces and I don't know I I truly believe there are I truly believe there are and I truly believe like uh, I have you know elements that have been my guardian angels throughout throughout the so like what throughout elements the journey just you know guardian people who have passed on or who sort of come in and like you know i grew up in a in a house with a tremendous amount of occult ideas so um a lot of different alternative you know religious thoughts so I, I i believe in all all those things so but, what from your mom or from yeah, your mom. grandma but like different ones or my like my mom my mom was very much into this, uh, an afro-cuban religion uh santeria um my mother was uh, a pra practitioner of that for many 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 years and it was in my house and and a lot of santeros and paleros which is another sort of current of that of, the, of those ideas more Congo based, more Con African Congo based ideas. Um, they were in my house, you know, like they were like, as a child, they were, they were there. I saw many things, many in crazy intense things, you know what I mean? That you would think that's crazy, you know what I mean? But like, and to them, it's, this is our religion. You know, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. So while I'm not a practitioner of it, I grew up in it. Yeah, so it you still know. has a, it's still with you. It's. I mean, it's it's in my DNA. I mean, right. I am very drawn to Western mystery ideas. You know what I mean, uh, you know, like the cult, occult renaissance that happened in England with Dion Forge and Alistair Crowley and all those that sort of those sort of ideas. I love Gurdjieff. I study, you know, I, I, there's many things that uh, that are part of my everyday uh, jam. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah, will. yeah. That's a good word for it. Everyday my jam. jam. I like it. Everyday jam. So do you talk to your sister much? Like, do you do you share these ideologies? I talk ideologies? to my sister once in a while. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah I talk to... My, no, my sister doesn't... We My sister doesn't sub subscribe to that stuff. But do you... Okay, so even that stuff, but like other... Just your your outlook on life. Like, do you compare notes a little bit or like, do you feel like it's the two of I you... I think my sister and I have very different oh, all right. outlooks on life. My sister... My sister's older than me. She has five kids. My, my sister... Um, I'm so much my mother's child uh, in many ways. Uh, well, I think my sister's more 
our uh, our our father's child. You know, I mean, in many ways, but. Uh, so I, just I'm, in your personalities and yeah. your well, my my sense of humor, my 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 love of of the world of mystery. Uh, all that's my mother. It's was, all your mother. All my mother. But how do you know that what you, her personality it derives from her, from your father? Because you didn't really even know him that well. Well, no, I don't know. I don't know him that well. I met him, you know. So I I saw him. I don't know him that well. But but I I, I I'm so much like. My mother. Uh-huh. I see more of my mother. I see things about you know. I see things in myself that I'm like, hmm, that's that are like my mother, which are things about my mother that I did not like. Ah, uh, so what happens when so, you see that? Well, you try you try and turn a wheel. You're like, that didn't work so good. Maybe like, because you have to you know, it's a different generation. My mother was very. If my mother drew a line with you. That was it. That was it, man. So very rigid. And she meant it. She fucking meant it. And I've found myself going that way where I've had to say, hmm, dude, you can't, that's not going to work really, ultimately. So we you have, called yourself out on it? Or somebody yeah, well, else I just did. think about it. I go, I go, it's better if we don't do, like life is better if you can forgive and like, and just get along even like you don't have to sort of spend time with that person but don't make don't be so rigid and because that's what just sort of eats you you know what I mean in a way you know what I mean like right, that's cool that's what you did that's all right we don't have to I don't have to go to your house we don't have we don't have to hang out but I know what you did but I'm I'm gonna be I'm still gonna talk to you and if I see you it's great you know what I mean um but my mother would be like no the end the end mm -hmm. I mean I saw her do it I saw her do it with her sister what happened well it, it's at my grandmother's funeral yeah there was a, you know it was, there was there was an incident and my mother didn't like what what was done or how she was treated and my mother was basically said like sat shiva basically like you're dead to me and, and that, that was, was that oh, was yeah. it forever yeah it went I saw her do it with a couple of people. When my mother did that, it, and, and you'd be like, oh, she doesn't really mean that. I go, no, man. She right, fucking Right, right. That's, that's the end, I know, right? She means you it, knew. dude. Like, yeah, you just, like, because I saw her do it. You know, I saw her do it, you know? And, I've, and I've, I've seen the tendency in myself to do that and have to check it. So have you ever done it without checking it? Um... There's a couple. There's a couple of people I have. I have. I've done it with that. That I think deserved it because the infraction had been so. So, so awful mm -hmm. that it was time. You know. I also believe that. You know, this is gonna sound like fucked up, but whatever. But I, I also believe that people have people have to come in and out of our life, and it's okay that they go out, like. It's okay, even if they were in your life for a long time. It's like I think things, things flow. I think, and they have to flow through. If you you can't, if you dam something up, you know, then you're stopping. Change is certain, and relationships change, friendships change, uh, relationships with husband and wife or girlfriend or whatever. Those every those things go through their own sort of things. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. and. So sometimes a friend that you'd be like, man, I'll always be friends with this person. Maybe sometimes that doesn't, then you're like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay, like, no, no hard feelings, like, we're just not as close anymore as we once were. I mean, and then some, some maybe a new friend comes in, you mean, or there's a change in dynamic. Uh, and I think that, I think, that's important, particularly for, I think, creatives, I think, because I think, I don't know, I've given my entire life to this. I don't have children. You know, my wife and I don't have children. We never wanted to have children. Everything, everything, everything is really always to feed the work itself, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I do photography, I paint. I mean, it's a whole, you a whole know, across the board, fucking ball of wax, man. You know, it's a whole crazy 
So you always knew to yourself you don't want children because yes. it, it, you, everything is in service of the art. I didn't. Kind of. I didn't realize it then. I just. I never. You know, my nephew. You know, um, uh, my 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 oldest nephew has uh, three kids, and he he knew he wanted to have kids when he was a little kid. Wait. So your sister is a grandmother. Yeah. Okay. So he knew he had kids. Okay, that was a side. Going aside, my yeah, I have, my sister's six years older than me. My sister is a grand. My sister had her her first child at eighteen. Oh, okay, yeah, she it seemed young to me for her for your nephew to have kids. Yes. But okay, so yes. he knew when he so you, back to what you're saying. He would say he would say yeah when I have kids. I'm like those words never came out of my uh-huh, mouth. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I was like, you know, I was a guitar player with long hair. I was like, kids, I don't know what that is, man. Yeah, I like guitar. You know, I like music. I want to play. You know, I want to be on the road. I want right. to you know. I'm like, uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I, some Thai kind of g- uh, gypsy, uh, you know, Vildachaya. I don't even, you know. Yeah, yeah. So how did you, and when did your wife come into the picture? My wife and I were friends. Uh, my wife was in the picture. Wait, uh, your wife, which by the way, can I just do a quick mention for anybody listening? She is the voice of Princess Jasmine. Is that exactly correct? Right. Yeah. My, my wife princess. is a Disney legend. Yes, yes. She's inducted into the like, Hall of Fame. My wife is a, you know, hand, handed Prince in the Cement, the whole, it's kind oh, of wild. Oh, on Hollywood Boulevard. No, on, or Hollywood, on the Walk of Fame, whatever on, it's called. On, on, the, on, on the Disney lot. Like, oh. with, with the princess, yeah. So, and they're only really like, what, five real major princesses, princes, yeah. right? Yeah. I remember like, the, right, whatever. There yeah. may be the five big ones. Yeah. That's, Jasmine is one of them. She, massive, sure. it's massive. insane. Yeah, it's absolutely okay. Yeah. So you were friends first. Yeah, we were friends, and then um, how did you know each other? Through we had the same circle of friends. I knew her friend Jill, and she knew my friend Sam, and we all knew each other. And I was, I had a different girlfriend, and she had a boyfriend, and and then one day we were both single, and. Uh, I had never sort of seen her, you know, like in that way. You know what I mean? And then we just started hanging out, like, hey, you know, like, and we just like, I was like, she's really cool, you know. And then um, we started going out and like, like, never stopped. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We started going out and we're still going out. Uh, and so the dates just kept in, continued. They kept the going. The days became weeks, months, and years. So you know. Um, it's cool. My wife is amazing. So she knows you pretty well then, I guess. She knows you. I would say about as good as anybody knows me, yeah. And is she an artistic, like is she like you or do you offset each other a little bit? Uh, she's, a, I'm a little more nutty artistically than, than she is. She is a, she's her own bohemian artist in her own way. You know, what she does is very unique. Um, um, I just have more. Uh, I go down. I go down different roads. You know, like I've had a camera since I was a kid. My mother bought me a camera and a thrift store. Like I love photography. Like there's a website you can go to, which has my photos and paintings. Oh, what? How do you get there? It's my name, YuleVasquez.com. There's nothing to do with acting. You'll never. If you went there, you wouldn't know. If you didn't know who I was, you wouldn't know this guy's an actor. Ah. You think it's just, so what kind of photography is it like? Uh, um, it's like document documentary street photography. I photograph a, a lot when I'm on locations. You know, I'll walk through the streets and I'll shoot photographs, and then my paintings reflect a lot of like things I saw as a child, like the iconography of of of, of Santeria and of Palo, the, the last symbols and sort of sigils and stuff like that. That's all in my paintings and like, um, yeah, and then I just did a collaboration with, with Jordi Moya, who's a, an actor from Spain, a wonderful actor who, you've seen him in a million things, you probably just don't know, but he's a wonderful painter so all that is going like this. The stew is yes. Your is like, mind is constantly busy. I think you're all kinds of gears moving around at all times. It's crazy. I I was at the airport the other day and I took my phone out and I dialed my agent, and, and I go and it rang and rang in the voicemail. I go oh, that's a weird voicemail. I didn't realize, dude, it's Sunday. You had no idea it was Sunday. No idea. Well, that's all right, yeah. right? Why would like, you? Why would you? What's wrong with that? Because or, I thought it was like a weekday, like because I'm always in in mode of like 
I'll be up at 11 o'clock, I'll be thinking, of, you know, I'm trying to develop this movie, I'm trying, you know, it's like, I just, it's not work to me. Yeah, it, yeah. It's not work to me. It is, it is, uh, and whether, for good or bad, it is my sort of reason f for existing in a way, you mm -hmm. know. Other than if there was, unless there's some other reason why I, why I'm here that I don't know about, you know, I, I know we're all looking for that reason or what what does it all mean? That's the question. But but you have the answer. It feels like you have the answer to some degree, even though maybe I know you don't really feel like you have the answer. It keeps me going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We it have takes, no answers. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, people say to me, "Hey, man, how are you?" Like earlier today, I go, "Any day above ground is a good day." Is my answer all the time to those people? And they're like, "Well, that's a low bar." I'm like, "Is it?" Is it a low bar? Or is it a high bar? Right. It's like you or is woke it exactly up, the opposite? You have options. Right. You fucking woke up today, man. Because it's perspective. That's, well, I, that's, I think so. Yeah. You know. You know what I'm saying? So it's not yeah. not not only is it not a low bar necessarily, but it's really a, be able to look at things that way. That's a high bar. I think so. I mean, if, you know, for me it is. For me, for me it's like, hey, man, I'll tell you who I am. We're right here. Right. We're right fucking here. Like, let's try and stay present. Yes. You know what I mean? So you are present. In a big way, I, most of the time. I, I try to be. I have things that I have things where I that I, I use to wake me up every once in a while to the present. You know what I mean I have reminders? Like what? Well, I have a reminder on my phone that goes off every day at three. Maybe, maybe I mean I don't. Um, it, it's on silent, but it probably just went off. What does it say right there on top? Uh, moment of gratitude. Eighteen minutes ago. So Come, you have those what, every day? Oh, like, that's set for every day at three that goes off. So no matter what's going on, like just even seeing it wakes you up to right now. You're like, okay, check. So like, let's do it now. What, what, you just got it. So what are you going to do with that? What, what I usually do is I have a quiet moment and I just basically give thanks to, for, for all of it. Shitty day, good day, whatever the fuck is going on. It's all fine. It's all... You know, or or it has to be fine. You know what I mean because if it's not, then I can't go on. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I sometimes it's hard for me to go on. It's hard for me to go on because I do suffer from, I do have, I do suffer from depression. So, which my mom did. So, days sometimes are hard for me. But those things help me. Right. They're like. So is it like chronic? Well, is it chronic depression that you feel like you have all the time, or are there bouts that come up? Well, I think I have a, I think I have a low a chronic low grade and then with with certain bouts of of you know whatever situational things or mm -hmm. stuff that my cyclical thinking will do to me and you know which is why I need to wake up to like to things and go like no man it's okay did you know that your mom was depressed I knew it I knew it later yeah and then when once I knew it later I recognized stuff that I'd seen as a child uh, my mother would get very low on Sundays. It was amazing. And I never liked Sundays as a kid. And I didn't realize why. And then, I, and then my wife said to me, well, of course, your mom would get very low on Sundays. Of course she didn't like Sundays. It was a shitty day. Very insightful. You know, what's amazing is my, my shrink had me ask my mother a question. I was a long time ago because my mother died in 2009, but... So my shrink said to me, because my, my shrink asked me, so what, what was your mother's state of mind when you guys came from Cuba? Of course, I never, I never thought about it. Well, you were very little. I was, I was two and a half years old, exactly. But I was like, well, what a fucking great question. Uh -huh. So I, said, so I, got, I call my mom and I go, well, mom, I'm just curious. What, what was your state of mind when we came from Cuba? Utter panic. Yeah. So my shrink goes, well, of course. What do you think, what do you, think you recorded? What do you think you little you will record it? Fucking terror, man. You know I mean terror? Um, the uncertainty of it all. My mother. I mean, when I when I when I look at a, an uncertainty in in my life and in my business, I can only imagine what my mother was looking at with two children and this coming to America. You know, going like now what? 
odd. your shrink uh, as a woman or was a, woman, a woman then too. So here's another here's another thing I'm picking up on it's too woman, is that yeah. you've also been surrounded by women who are very insightful. Like they see Super. things, which is maybe like you know a quality that many women have. I don't you know I don't want to say that men don't have it, but the women in your life have known it's time to shine the flashlight over yeah. there. Yeah. I, 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 I agree. I think without a doubt. Well, for, look, you're and right. And your wife too, noticing yes, the Sunday. Well. That's right. That's right. Well, my wife is super smart. Super smart. Uh, you're right in that doesn't mean that men are not in, insightful, but there are way more insightful women than men. I'm not, no, no disrespect to, to, to the men. fellas, right. but... The women I've encountered, oh lordy, whip smart and like super insightful. And women are just super powerful, man. Like it's my experience with women is their their absolute power, you know, mm. like tr like tremendous power. I'm gonna flip it for a second. Russian doll. Let's just get. Look, can we just jump in? Sure. Yeah. Whatever you like. Because I watched that right after it was released on Netflix. Yeah. Because it became a thing very quickly. It I became like. a thing that yeah. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Yeah. But yeah. It I don't. I don't. I didn't hear about it ahead of time or anything, and then it like came up, and I was like, oh, Natasha Leal. I'm like, of course I would check this out, and. You know, it was so, I really liked it. Like, I have to tell you, I got more and more into it with each episode. Did people tell you that? Yeah, people have actually said that to me. I yes. felt like every episode got better and better and like... Um, it just it, drew you in more and more. Yeah, yeah, it drew you in more and more. Whereas at first you're like, oh, what is this? And then it's like, okay, you hear the music and you get the right. music. Like the music would be my head all the time, the Russian yeah. doll music. Yeah. Whatever that means. What even is that song uh, when they're in the bath, when she's in the bathroom? Is it Harry Nilsson or something? What I is don't it? Know. I don't um, Anyway, we'll it's a very out. cool show and different from all the other ones that are out there now. And you really had a cool part too because you kind of I felt for you. But see there you had a you had that feminine side a little Correct. bit there. Correct. That's right. Coming through. Well, you, what's interesting about that about that, you know, it's a sort of uh I think it's more we've seen more often the woman who keeps coming back to them to the man and this is the reverse. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she basically, mm -hmm. you know, she just keeps kicking me in the nuts. Yeah, you know I mean, and I just keep coming back. I'm like, kick me more. Well, you, you were hooked. You were hooked, hooked on her, man, and I liked her, and I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to have a thing with her, and I wanted to future. like have a solid future with her, and I wanted my kid. I have, you know, I'm a dad. I have a, I have a kid, and you know, and like, you know, I sort of blew up my life for her in a way. I mean, uh, not in a way. I say it. I go, I blow up my life for you. Yeah. I mean, and uh, and she just can't, yeah. she can't do it. You know, she can't do it, you know. And she keeps, just when you keep thinking, oh, she's going to, she's going to, it's going to work out for them. And then she just blows it up, like the scene in the bedroom, you know. Where yeah. You think, oh, they're not, and suddenly she's basically saying, I'm not doing this with you. So that was filmed in New York. Yeah. Right? All in New yeah, York? Yeah, all of it. When was that? Uh, we shot it last year. Last I, winter. I would say uh, beginning of the year, like last year. And how did you get hooked up into that? Well, I knew Natasha. Uh, we, we were friends. I was shooting I Am The Night uh, in L.A. And she talked to me about this thing and sent me the pilot. And I go, this is, I really liked it. And I, it was an opportunity for me to do a part like that. You know what I mean? Because I was... At that moment, I was playing a guy who was so fucking dark. Are we talking about I Am The Night Guy? Yeah, yeah. that dude, yeah. That dude, that, that's a, right. He's so pretty serious, that he's guy. He's pretty serious. That guy's not fooling around. No, he's right. a tough guy. Then I was like, this is really cool, and this is a, this is a chance to, to show that side of me, you know, and and um, and um, I just, I right away, I saw, I, I read it, and I was like, I knew exact, I knew exactly what it was. I just, it's like, I had a, an instinct for that, you know what I mean? And then the, the bonus that we could have never have foreseen was that when I started to work with Natasha, we had this crazy chemistry, and that just sort of clicked. And then we started improvising and flowing with the stuff, and it became what what it became. I mean, oh, so, so those like the scenes with the synagogue and all that were those like improvised? Some of some of that stuff is improvised. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, like you know, we just kind of like playing around, and you know, like you know. You know, it, they're written. The schematics are there. They're written, but some, you know, we we can like mess with it a little mm -hmm. bit. You know what I mean? And like, because you had two people that 
that were that were they were just dialed in. I mean, like you know, I was tuned into her, and she was tuned into me, and we could you know. So I'm working with Ben Mendelssohn right now, and him and I have that same thing. Well, we can we something the other day we went off the rails on the scene, and, and Jason Bateman just let it roll. He just he didn't cut, and we just like improvised this whole thing, you know, which probably never be in the show, but it was so much fun. I hope it, it is so cool. Yeah, I mean, so but those things, those things. Even if you don't use them, they they lead you somewhere. Like, because when you go again, like the next take, what you just did is, you, is is in that layer is in. You know what I mean? Right, still inside of you. Absolutely. Uh huh. Uh huh. Absolutely. You don't have to do anything. Just, so, and you and Ben Mendelsohn worked together on Bloodline. Yeah, I never had any scenes with Ben uh, when I was doing Bloodline, but uh, uh, we were both in in the keys together, but. Uh, in this thing, I most of my stuff was all my stuff is is with Ben really. And um, so you, you were playing just uh, to get back to. So you were filming "I Am the Night." So right now, you're both sides of your personality. Well, not even they're not both sides of your personality because you're not really that tough guy at all, really. Well, you know, but you're I, showing you have two roles now coming out with different sides of but you. But it's all you know. Or, we're we're all many things. Yeah, though, yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? yeah. You mean like I think ultimately, you can't become someone else. I have a, I have a real issue when I hear somebody say, "Oh man, he became that character." I went, I, 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 I said, "I'm gonna stop you right there." Um, that's a mental disorder. Uh, it's multiple personality, and, and so you can't become anything else. He portrayed that character, but he, all, it's always him. Do you understand? That's the thing that's unique about anything that you do as as an artist is that you come through. If we, we need to see you coming through because that's the one unique thing. That's your one unique DNA that separates it from how somebody else does it. You know what I mean? So there's no becoming anything. Uh -huh. it's, all us, it's, it's all us coming through those circumstances, that writing, it's just, you know. Yeah. Again, it lives and dies with the writing, ultimately. But, right. You know. Okay, so Seinfeld. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that job changed uh, changed my life. I <laughs> yeah. So it Seinfeld. changed your life. So okay. So just to be to be clear, you were in three episodes. Is that's that right? right? Yeah. Okay. So you're in the Soup Nazi episode, which obviously is like one of the episodes. One of the most probably the most famous Seinfeld probably. episode ever. Yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And the Puerto Rican Day is that what they call the episode? The Puerto Rican Day. Yeah. Pre yeah. Not Puerto the Puerto Rican Day Parade. I think it. I think it's. I think it's Puerto Rican Day. Okay. And and the uh, ribbon episode, the uh, I think it's called the sponge. Yes, yeah. another famous one. Not famous. They're all famous, but you know what I mean. Another. Well, the Puerto Rican Day is the most controversial one because it was pulled. It was yanked for, for a while, because when it first aired, uh, the Puerto Rican community was was offended because there's a moment where um, the Puerto Rican Day flag is on fire, and then Kramer throws it on the ground and he's stepping on it, and um, so that. Jerry apologized, and that episode was didn't run for a long time. But I now it's that. now you now you can get now it. it's back in circulation. Yeah, so yeah. what it ran that first time, like it, the first it, Thursday it the first night time, or whatever, and then, was, and then yeah, they and just then pulled was, it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what about what about that whole experience? That changed your life? Yeah, it did. I mean, the thing you need to know about that is so you know the the character is called Bob the Intimidating Gay Guy. That's that's what it's called on. I know, on, and I read that you said you got that you you channeled your mom. It's my mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an imitation of my mother. Yeah, so I so I went in there and did and it. And you are very you are that intimidating. Wait, what is it, Bob the intimidating, Bob the intimidating gay, 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 gay guy? guy? Yeah, you, you pull it off for sure. Thank you. Well, he's <laughs> a, you know, I think Kramer calls him the the gay toughs, you know, but um, you know, it can't. Uh, Billboard Billboard magazine did this top. Uh, top 50 or something, 100 Seinfeld uh, characters. And I think I was like number 21 or something, which is a nice. big honor. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, Holly Lebed, the lady who taught, she, this appointment came across her desk and she's like, she called me, she's like, I literally was in LA, she said, go to CBS Radford now, you're going to read for Jerry and, Larry David and I just went over there and I was Were like, you nervous about that? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was a little nervous. Sure, because I was like, you know, fucking, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this thing, I'm like, 
and I, I literally have this idea to do it there, like before I went in, as my like to do that character, that character that you wind up seeing. So I go in the room and I do that character, and those two guys goes, "What the fuck is that?" And I go, "Well, it's kind of like my mom, something like that, you know, because it's not written Latino." Oh, what? It's not. No, it's called Bob the Intimidating Gay Guy. Oh, it could be anything. Oh, right. Could be anything. Right. Just Bob, you know, and he's intimidating gay guy. So it could be any, you know. So I go in and I do that and they're like, do that again. So I did it again and they're like, <laughs> I don't know what. They were like, they're like, all right, man. So I left and it's like, I, and I got the job. And then it became like, it became like this sort of beloved Seinfeld villain. And I actually have a script. So I did, the Puerto Rican Day Parade is the second to the last episode. Ever? Ever, yeah. Oh. Yeah, which is interesting. So I had them, which I, I never, ever do this. I never have, but I said, because it was ending, you know, and I said, would you guys sign this, the script? And I think Jerry wrote, to the greatest Seinfeld villain ever, mm -hmm. Seinfeld villain. And I was like, and I have that script. I have that and signed by, Chris, signed by Michael Richards. That is uh, so cool. I have it, yeah. Where I, is it? It's, uh, it's in storage. It's, we just actually took it out because we're moving some boxes and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, but, I hope uh, you have it wrapped up in something nice and It's uh, not protective. wrapped up. It should be I should wrap it up. You should. Um, put it yeah. in some sort of like that special paper or something that like protects it. I think I should put it in so it doesn't deteriorate yeah, or something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's been there since 1997. So. Right. We're a distance now from yeah. Seinfeld. Still, I can't tell you how many times in a week somebody go like, you're that guy from Seinfeld. I was shopping in Atlanta. I was at Whole Foods in Atlanta. And... I said to somebody in the in the meat department, I said, I'm sorry, where's the, um, I was asking for like the almond butter. They're like, it's aisle seven. They're like, that guy from Seinfeld. And I'm like, you got a good eye, man. Because I have a hat on, I have this sort of beard and like, but they, they love, I don't know. It's so that's interesting. You know why? I think that a lot of people get recognized, but people don't know why they know them. Like a lot of people. Lot. Will be like, oh, you know, I'll be at the store. Somebody will be like, oh, do I know you? Like, did we go to the same high school or something? That's really nutty. Like, but it's the opposite for you. They know, bam, you're the intimidating gay guy. But I've done like Bob, you know, sixty movies or well, like I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But go it's right always to that. Bob. Nineteen ninety. The first one was ninety five. So just think about like the power and the reach of that show. Yeah, but that everybody and their mother watched Seinfeld. Everyone. And even if they didn't then, everybody still is now. I think not even I mean, believe me, I, I can tell you that Chaz Palminteri, who was on the yeah. podcast, tells me that he spends his days watching Seinfeld re reruns. That's amazing. Um, Joe Montaigne said the same thing. That's amazing. So the, wow. the people are watching right now. That 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 is amazing. I yeah. mean, I think it's you know, it's the. I mean, that show. You know, I'm just flattered to have been a part of something so monumental. I mean, uh, I was just asked to go do this thing, which I cannot do. The Brooklyn Cyclones are having a, a like a Seinfeld night, and they asked if I would come out and throw throw out the first pitch. I was like. I don't know. I don't know anything about you know baseball, right? So I'm like you know, uh, but I was like, oh, I'm going to be in Atlanta, but I'm I'm so honored. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, you know, but you know, you know, a lot of people don't know, and I didn't know this till later. Because I because I st I come into Seinfeld, it's already that machine is already going. It's maybe maybe season five or something like that. Right, because the Soup Nazi was that the first one? Yeah. That's and that like, was season five. You're saying already? Yeah, like four or five. Okay. You know I mean, had had to be. What I didn't know was that when that show first came on, it, it failed miserably. Yeah, they tell and then us they retooled it. I had no idea. But not only did they retool it, but I think that, well, they retooled it, they brought in Elaine, right? Because at first there were three guys in the pilot or something. Um, but I think it just took a while too to find its audience. But man, did it find its audience. Yeah. Because I, I, I defy anybody to find somebody that could touch the power of that show. I mean, the, the, the heights of that show. Well, and, they they, thought, and they went out high. Yeah. You know, well, Jerry's they, like, we're going to end it now. We're high. 
they thought that no, it wouldn't appeal to anybody because it was like a New York Jewish guy or whatever. And like that would be a very small audience. But it became like a mass. It was a moment in time when everybody. It's amazing. And it made like it. It, you wouldn't have Curb without that show, you know. Yeah. You know, Larry Day. I mean, you wouldn't have. I, I you know what I remember? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll give you a great anecdote. The guy who plays my boyfriend in there, this guy called John Paragon. This is one of the coolest things. When I went to do it, I was like, "You're John Paragon," and he's like, "So you probably, you don't know who that is." But were you were you? I don't a know who that is. Who is it? I'm gonna tell you. Okay. Were you a Pee a Pee Wee Playhouse fan? No, okay. never. See, I was a huge Pee Wee Playhouse. Oh, okay. Fan. He was John B. the Genie. I don't even know who that is. That means right, so other much people to know. me. That the listeners like, know. He was the guy in the box, like he had gold face, like he would he'd open the box and there'd be a, a talking genie. That was John Paragon, and he was a groundling with Paul Rubin and saw like told me stories of seeing Paul develop Pee Wee like at the groundling like oh, that's like the day when he brought the suit and it was too short like how the stuff just clicked and like oh, this is just like this it should be a short suit it should be you know so he watched the creative process of Pee Wee Herman yeah. being created and, and imagined Elvira also created it in the groundlings I mean a lot of these sort of amazing uh, characters came out of this improv place you know yeah which is Anyways, but. well, it is like a, um, uh, like a, what do you call it? Like a farm, it's farm, like a I want to say. It's, it's tank, like right? A, where yeah. everything's, all the ingredients are there, That's and then right. you're with each the creative minds are all working together, it's like a think or feeding. Tank. The, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, uh, wait, what do you farm raised? Yeah, yeah, I, exactly. I know what you're trying to you say. Know yeah, I, mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> it's a breeding ground. Yeah, it's a breeding ground. I guess. That's but that's, it sounds like it's like yeah, it for germs weird. or something. Yeah. But yeah, we know. It's a petri dish. Yeah. It's a petri dish for comedy. Uh, exactly. <laughs> hey, lady. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even know what that means. Uh, Wait, what is "Hey, lady" from again? Uh, Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis, right? Come on. No, no, I know, I knew it. Hey, well, that was, Jerry I'm not Lewis. Try to do it. Jerry Lewis. But. I remember. I remember my mother took me to the movies, and I was a little. My mother took me to. There's two movies I saw as a little kid that blew my mind. One was this movie, Jerry Lewis movie where he went to eat. I mean, he was like eating an ice cream cone. And, and he, like, and he put it in, instead of putting it in his mouth, he put it in his eye, and I, was, I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. The other one was A Shot in the Dark, which is the first Pink Panther movie. Oh. Peter Sellers, which became such an influence on me. You know, Peter Sellers and Montgomery Clift are probably my biggest idols. Right, you said him before, so he was kind of your guy who you would look at and be like, this is what I want. That's the, that's, that's the way to do it. Do yeah. you watch old movies and things now? I have, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Not so much anymore. So, you know, I have a, I have every Montgomery Cliff movie. Or something, you know, I'll, I'll so oftentimes I'll, I'll if I'm gonna go do a job, I'll look at something. You know, um, there's a film by Phil Hoffman that Phil Hoffman's in called Owning Mahoney that I watch a lot uh, when I go do something because it's a, it's a less you know him and Montgomery Cliff is a sort of lesson in simplicity, and like getting rid of everything, you know. So I loved being directed by Phil, because Phil was like, you always knew Phil was never gonna let you look bad. Like, you were always gonna look like a fucking genius, you know what I mean? So that feels was, good, yeah. yeah. And comfortable to be able to do your thing. It's like he yeah. allows you to be. Let you yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And steers you in the right, you know. But, uh, but Peter Sellers was a guy that I was like, what, you know, was that? And then I saw Being There, which is my favorite film ever, I was like, that performance, you know, great Hal Ashby director, you directed it, and um, but this, yeah, it's Andy Garcia's favorite movie too. Oh, Andy Garcia, I really appreciate him too. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. Now he was just in that Clint Eastwood movie. Yeah, it was unrecognizable. You should you should interview Andy. Well, I have to tell you, I did try to interview Andy, and I tried to reach out to. I don't remember who he has. Does he have a publicist, a manager? I don't know, but I'm not sure I even reached the person because I don't remember getting any kind of a no thanks. He's not available. Yeah, or I may have. I can. Do you I have can, an in with him? Yeah, it's my friend. Oh, seriously? Yeah, I, 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 he's a super interesting guy. You know what I mean, but he, you know, he's, uh, you know, his 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 relationship to uh, to music is is, is is huge. You know, like he's another one of those guys that multi multidisciplinary. You know, multi, right, you know, right. He's, multi hyphen uh, master. Absolutely. You know, uh, produce records. I mean, uh, it's just amazing. An, another amazing story, but coming from Cuba. You know, 
the, you know. Wait, he came from Cuba? Yeah. He did? Yeah. You know, the Cuban American experience, very few people fully understand that. And not, so, like, that, what, not what, that they should be. No, not but we, should know, what, you know. uh, maybe you can enlighten everybody <clears throat> a little bit. Like, what is. One of the. One of the, one of the one of the things with it is that you never feel like you're quite at least for me like I'm quite anything like I have one foot in one world and one foot in this world you know and it's like I came from I have, I have no memories of Cuba I mean I but Spanish is my first language, and I, my mother, I always spoke to my mother in, in Spanish, so I learned English in school, so I'm, f I'm fully bi bilingual. Um, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't notice that at all. There's yeah. no sign well, that it's up, not your first language. I grew up with, I grew up in yeah, yeah. Miami Beach with all my friends were white Jewish kids. All my girlfriends were Jewish, Jewish girlfriends, you know, Jew, Jewish. Like, I grew up with Jews, like, and they were like, so they they had no they had no accent. They were Americans. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I spoke like you know, and that's Spanish was what I spoke at home, and then English. That's what that's what that's what I used. That's what I, you know I had I, you know. All right. So in that group, you were sort of like a Cuban, right? I was Cuban. Is that what I you mean? Like in America, you're sort of Cuban, but in Cuba, you would be American. Is Correct. that kind of how it is? In fact. The first time that I went to Cuba, I went in with my Cuban passport, and in Cuban immigration said, "Look, took my passport." I remember saying, "Oh, you're one of the ones that left." Oh. Like one of the, like you know they call us worms, you know that's what literally they call it in Spanish gusano. They call us worms, the people that left. We you you abandoned the the revolution. The mother. Fucking, oh, you know. so interesting. It's idiotic. So I wound up renewing my Cuban passport. So it was not to have an issue. So when I go to Cuba, I leave with my American passport. When I enter Cuba with my Cuban passport. And you can do that? They sure. don't question that? Like I have a Cuban passport. That's you know? right. And That's I exit right. Cuba with my Cuban passport, and I re-enter the United I mean, I have, I, have, I have two passports. But the thing is, I've been in Cuba with my, with my brother walking around, so with my, with my two friends from the States and... And um, our, our driver and, and, and my brother, so my brother and the driver live in Cuba, and the police would come and ask them for their papers and ask them, why are you with these Americans? And now, so imagine, like, imagine you're walking on the street, and that, uh, it's, it's, to, to us, that's unimaginable. Right. It's absolutely unimaginable. Unimaginable. And, when, and I'm standing there, and I said to my brother, like, I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, my brother's like, don't, don't even get involved in this. Don't worry about it. Get it. And they produce papers. What if somebody said to you, "Give us your papers, Karen?" Yeah, right. Like, what, are, no, like, right. what the fuck are you talking about? My papers. What is this? East Berlin? It's like, they, but they produce documentation, and they have to, have to actually walk around with it. Fucking in case of yeah, that. She, why are you? And they call the they call the American. They call they call us Yumas, like three ten to Yuma. You know that movie? No. It's an old western. Oh, I don't know Western. So American, I know. I don't really, yeah. but I know. I know that the guy. I said, "What you must?" Uh, he said, "That's what they call the Americans. You must." I go from my, you know, that, from the movie Three Ten to Yuma. I'm like, that's fucking amazing. So, getting back to the Cuban American experience in America, right? What is it like? You know, it's the feeling of exile, which is what we call ourselves. You know, we're exiles. You know, you know, it's it's the feeling of we came here. Um, and, and we're here and we're American, which is, I mean, I'm an American. I mean, you know, but I always have that, you know, that one thing that's, is in Cuba. Like I remember going to Cuba and realizing, oh, I'm from here. Like I get it, but I'm not really from here. And I'm American, but I wasn't born here, but I'm American. I identify with everything here. So I feel like I'm in two different worlds, you know, and then I'm in a business that sees me with my Latino name and puts me in, the, in another, it's, an, it's another form of, uh, I don't know, you're placed in another form of, uh, I don't know. Like identity or something. Yeah, in a or way. Or a box. I mean, yeah. But at least for me personally, I feel like 
I never really know where, what I belong to. I mean, I've never felt like I belong to many things, uh, which is something I've discussed at great length in, in therapy. Because it's even, even happened to me with groups of people. Like, yeah, I'm not really part of that clique. You know I mean, I, I, like, um, you know, it's like, uh, it's funny because Andy and I, have, we've talked about this. It's like, it's like you, you, you're invited to the party, but you're not sitting at the table. Right. You know what I mean, you're yeah. just, you're at the party, which is good, but you're not, you don't have a seat at the table. So, it's an yeah. interesting. Oh, that's interesting. It's an right. interesting feeling. You know what I mean, and it could, in many ways, be a self-imposed thing. You know, right? Maybe your perception. Did correct. your therapist say this? Like, is this what's really happening well, sure. to you, or is this your perception? That's a great possibility. You are going to send me a bill, aren't you? Uh, I know it's going to. I'm going to be like seven hundred dollars th therapy. So I, I have no. Uh, should I lay down here, please? Um, uh, Freud? No. Um, yeah, I mean, it it might very well be self self imposed. imposed. Yeah, it could be. That's I mean, what you should discuss with Andy and figure out both of you. Just, but the, it's interesting that you're both ha that you both could relate to that. Um, it may be real, and it may not be. Yeah, I mean, you know, I have, I have a memory of walking, walking in uh, Miami Beach with my mother when I was a little kid. And my mother was talking to me in Spanish, and somebody walking by and saying, "Speak English or go back to your own country." That's so. It was, kind of, it was, it was amazing. I was like, "Wow, that's, I was like, wow, that's amazing." I didn't even know what had happened. You know, my mother, right, but that's that stood it was, with it stayed with. But you. I remember it. Right. I remember that. Like, it's crazy. There's so many things I don't remember. I remember that. I can, I can even tell you what sidewalk I was on. Yeah. Right on 15th in Pennsylvania. I'll never forget as long as I live. Isn't yeah. that weird, too, how you kind of remember, you can yeah. remember things associated with places? Absolutely. I can tell you that where I was when I was having a conversation about a specific thing with somebody, and it was nowhere important, but I can, like, recall the conversation in my head, and I yeah. will see... That's right. Like you're saying, That's right. what sidewalk I was walking on. Cause so weird. Because you tied it, you married it to something. Yes. Which absolutely anchored it, and it's indelible in, yeah. your, in your brain. Like and it yeah. really was a powerful, yeah. it must have been a power thing that sunk in or something, because yeah. you're, you felt it with different senses. I don't Absol know. Yeah. No, so and, and, yet, and yet I can't remember what I had for breakfast. Because it's meaningless, That's why. Who cares what you had for breakfast? That's right. You know what I'm saying? Well, I am eating less. Because I, I work with this nutritionist, but I have, to, I have an app. I have to enter my food every day. Oh, what, what app is that? Like uh, It's called Chronometer, but okay. it's an app that he, he's tied into it, so he can look. Um, and it's, it's, it's been, it's, he's changed my life, but I have to enter my food. So, so he'll have to remember what you, you know. You enter it, and then you forget it then maybe, right? Yeah, but I was, I was trying to remember it so I could enter it. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck did I do? Oh, like, God. I you have like, to enter it right fucking after hopeless. you. Fucking hopeless, yeah. Right after you eat it. Right, right. I was like, as I'm, as I'm eating, I, need, I, need, I should enter it. I know, it's crazy. All but, right, so I think, I feel like we could talk for another three hours, and we could do we a could. longer therapy You're session. You're very easy. But the, 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 the bill would be astronomical. The bill would be right. You would have to go get another gig God, in yes. Atlanta for another six months to, to pay, pay for it the off. therapy. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna let's do this. I'm gonna ask you my question that I like to ask at the end, which but I kind of feel like we, you almost already answered it, which does sometimes happen. So it's a two part question, and the first part is, what is the image that people have of you? Like who do they think you are before they know you, for real? Super sort of confident, like cocky guy, you know? A tough, no. <laughs> Tough. A, street tough. Seinfeld, a, street tough. A, a Seinfeld tough. Right. Uh, maybe that. I don't know. Like, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, I don't know. Maybe even some people might perceive me as being even arrogant. I don't know. I don't know. How could they perceive you that way? Well, I don't know. Just it's because their perception, you're, it's you know? the roles. It's because you're such a good actor. Well, I mean, uh, well, that's very kind of you to say, but I, I don't know. I just think. People's perception of me might be, oh, this guy has the world by the balls. I mean, I mean, it's so easy for him. I mean, that's maybe that's what mm -hmm, they think. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And you know? what's the real deal? <laughs> no fucking way. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hanging on by a thread. You know, I mean, you know, you know, I'm okay, but like, it's work. Like, it's daily work. 
like that's fucking real. I mean, and uh, and it's all been earned at, at at great cost. Even the even the cost of of leaving your home at a young age so you could pursue something, and then all those years where you didn't see your family, you know, my mother or my grandmother, like all that time that you don't have with them because you could not do this thing you wanted to do where you, where they lived. That's a sacrifice. That's a thing. But that's what it takes, though. You know. If you're not willing, if if you're not willing to do that, then get out, then go do something else, because that might be as easy as it fucking gets. You know what I mean? Which you don't know at the time, but because it, the road of any artistic endeavor or of anything you want to do well. Anything you want to do. Yeah, yeah, if your heart's if really you in a, it. If you want to be a therapist, exactly. Whatever. I watch people, I love watching YouTube videos of people who restore things. Take very old things and they restore them. And it's fascinating. Like the detail, the craftsmanship. Anything you want to do well comes at a fucking price. That's it. Yeah. And that's what it all boils down to. Send the bill <laughs> to... Uh, <laughs> if you're listening, I... I'm leaving here. My head is a lot smaller. <laughs> My head's been shrunk. Thank you. It's supposed to expand your mind, not not shrink it. But isn't that a weird term? The shrink, like that's crazy. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, right? My shrink. Weird. I'm going to the shrink. I don't, yeah, I don't. You know. Right to shrink your. What does that yeah. mean? Yeah, I love, I love the therapist. It's the, it's the one thing I do for my. It's like it's all about I. Nobody's going to interrupt me. Yeah, like, yeah. Just gonna listen, it's a luxury, gonna really. I th I think it's a luxury. I think. I think everybody should be in therapy. Yul, thank you so much for doing this. Kara, I'm gonna tell you something. If this had been any more fun, it would have been illegal. <laughs> That's how fucking fantastic you are. I had an amazing time with you. Thank you very much for this, it's lovely. That was Yul Vasquez. I like him, don't you? And did you notice when you downloaded this that there's also a five minute Yule Vasquez bonus available right now? It's light and it's fun and it is a great ending to our real and personal conversation. So enjoy. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast because the big trip I just took to LA last week is about to unfold in your podcast app. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson. Thanks for listening to Really Famous. That is awesome. I really appreciate it. And seriously, I told you the minute you walked through the door, I felt like this is good. And, well, I mean and, it. and uh, it was better than I expected. We'll do it again. Let's do it again. We'll do it. Uh, we'll do. I mean, we'll figure something. We'll talk about other stuff. Let's talk about other stuff. Um, all right. Thank you.